So there's been a lot of talk about how you can't take good photos on the Sony FX3. Well, I beg to differ. So when the FX3 first came out, there was a lot of talk about how it was essentially the same camera as the Sony a7S 3 just in a different body or form factor. And a lot of people even thought that this is what the a7S 3 should have been. But then as people started diving deeper, that's when they really started to see the main differences and one of the biggest ones being that the FX3 doesn't have a viewfinder while the a7S 3 does. And that's when people just completely wrote off the FX3 for if you're a hybrid shooter or if you equally shoot photo and video. Well, as someone who shoots more video than photo, this really didn't bother me all that much, and I just felt the FX3 was better suited to all my needs. So, I went ahead and grabbed one and didn't think twice about this whole photos issue. But as time went on and I booked a lot more shoots over the course of the summer that actually required me to shoot both video and photo, that's when this whole thing just kind of got in my head again. I really started debating, should I be bringing two cameras on set? One that can shoot my video, which is the FX3, and another camera like my older A6300 to take all the photos. I started thinking about all that talk about how the FX3 was not meant to take photos and how you had to have an A7S3 if you really want to take advantage of the photography, and it all just kind of got to my head. But then I just stopped myself and I was like, wait, like this is just complete nonsense. Of course the FX3 can take good photos. Why would I not be able to take good photos on this camera just because there's no viewfinder? That just does not make sense to me. So I said, screw it, I'm just gonna chance it and bring only my FX3 as my main camera on set for these jobs. And here are some of the results. So how did I go about taking these photos, you might ask? Well, for starters, the FX3 still has a decent screen on the back of the camera, and it actually articulates out in different directions. Now, I know it's not the best quality screen or the biggest screen out there, but you can still perfectly see when you're trying to frame your subject and trying to get everything all in focus, especially if you have an autofocus lens. As someone who started out as a photographer before really focusing on video, trust me, I love looking through a viewfinder and I will always prefer that if I have the choice. But in situations like this where I'd rather bring just one main camera to my shoot, I will gladly sacrifice not having a viewfinder to look through. Adapt or die, baby. And in addition to using the screen that it comes built into the camera, I also usually have an external monitor attached to my camera as well. And coming in at between five and seven inches, depending on the monitor I choose for that specific job, it is much bigger, way bigger than what's actually built into the camera. So this really makes things a lot easier to see. Like I mentioned, if you're using autofocus lenses, then either of these two options will be perfect for you. But if like me, you're using manual cine lenses, then this external monitor at a much bigger size will just do wonders for you. And since the external monitors that I use have features like focus peaking, I can absolutely nail my focus no problem anytime I want to use my manual cine lenses. Now, yes, sometimes I do miss the mark and I do have to refocus or reframe, but I usually shoot a ton of pictures anyway, so I'm not normally dealing with that as an issue. Also, since I have rigged out my FX3 in quite a modular way, I can actually take it off very easily from the main big rig so that it's in a much more compact form factor when I want to take photos. So swapping between shooting videos and photos with my setup is a complete breeze. Now, before I jump into my final point here, I just wanna give a quick shout out to Cuts Clothing for sponsoring today's video. For the past few months, I've been wearing Cuts nonstop, and these have to be some of my favorite pieces of clothing that I own. As a filmmaker and content creator, I'm always looking to be super comfortable, but stylish, and Cuts has me covered. With their new winter collection, they got a variety of options from tees to polos, to Henleys, to hoodies, and they come in a variety of awesome new colors, like this hoodie right here in the Cabernet red color. So if you're looking to get some new threads, head on over to the link down in the description below or use code AlexSPerry15 at checkout to save 50% off your entire order. But enough of that, let's get right back to my final point. So as a final note here, I feel like in choosing the FX3 over the A7S3, I already went in with the approach that I wanted things to be more filmic and cinematic. I had debated for quite a while when deciding to get the FX3 on which lens to get with it, and initially, I thought I was gonna get the Sigma 24 to 70, especially when I was considering getting the A7S III first. But then I thought, if I wanted to take my game to the next level, I thought it was time to focus on getting a cinema camera, even though the FX3 is more of a mini or budget level cinema camera, as well as getting cinema lenses. I had been debating that for a long time. I had always wanted to get my hands on some cinema lenses, and I came across the SLR Magic Micro Prime Cine line, which is a budget cinema lens lineup. 
and those lenses are absolutely fantastic. By going this route, it really helped elevate the quality of my work. The quality of these lenses are just outstanding, and they really do have a lot of character, having beautiful flaring and even almost a bit of a black pearl mist-like look to them, and I just wouldn't have achieved that kind of look if I had gone with a more digital and clinical looking Sigma autofocus lens. And the point of me telling you about all this is to show you that by choosing the FX3 and going this route, it helped me decide to go the cinema lens route, which enabled me to take awesome, beautiful photos with these lenses as well. I wouldn't have had that option or I wouldn't have had photos that have this type of quality to them if I had gone the Sigma route. My videos and in turn these photos would have that more digital clinical look to it. So I'm just super happy that I chose these lenses here. So I really do think it is complete nonsense when people say you can't shoot photos or can't shoot good photos on the Sony FX3 because it wasn't designed to do that and wasn't meant to shoot it because there is no viewfinder. I personally think the photos I've shown you here today just kind of speak for themselves, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below what you think of these photos and if you think the FX3 really is usable for taking photos or if you think I'm absolutely crazy and think the FX3 has no business taking photos. And with that, I just want to thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button down below and also subscribe. I'm Alex Perry. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.